do you um, you spend a bunch of time at your academy when you're in Australia? Yeah, yeah, you know, I train with the kids a lot, and train the kids, and I'm around like before and after their workouts. So yeah, I do a fair bit of stuff there, and then I just work out there during the day. So and then you mix in some beach time. Not in Australia, but when you get to yeah, when I get to Croatia, yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. Train in the mornings and swim in the afternoons. So. Given the playoff run, was it any different going going back home this time? Uh? A little bit. Um, I mean, it's just good winning. Going home on a winning note, even though we did get knocked out in the second round, you know, it felt like we actually did something um, and, and created some hype and <clears throat> have something to build on for the season. So it's always better to go into an off season um, going further than you did the season before and then having something to build on. So it's, it was a good off season and people kind of respected that. You seem to care a lot about uh, basketball in Australia and the growth of that sport. Uh, how do you characterize the state of it right now? Oh, it's hard to say. It's Australia's um, number one sports are, are not world sports. You know, number one sport is Australian rules football, which is not rugby. It's, it's completely different. But that's the number one sport. Um, the northern states, it's rugby, and then you got cricket, um, and now soccer's taken over, and a couple of other sports. So, basketball is probably it, you're lucky to scrape in the top ten. I think probably seven or eight, um, and you know it's had its teething problems. Um, it was booming in the '90s, and then hit a low in the early 2000s, and now it's kind of all over the place, so it's trying to find its, its feet. Um, the NBA is probably bigger than, than the Australian league in Australia, um, as far as um, fans. Fans probably more fans in Australia follow the NBA than they do the local league, which is good and bad. But um, you know, we're trying to trying to figure out a way of how to relate, you know, kids to to Australian players because um, you know, if the, if the local game doesn't flourish, we won't we won't have NBA players, we won't have uh, we won't have good college players and good international players. Bob talked uh, about the possibility of maybe sending some of the Warrior staff over to see you. Did, did anybody get over there? Yeah. Um, I know they were all fighting well, for that assignment. Yeah, well, Johan Wang, Johan Wang, who now is our head athletic trainer, he um, he came out to Croatia about four weeks ago, three weeks ago, to, to see me work out um, for about a week. He was there and um, was happy with what he saw. He, he was there for about yeah, five days, I think, and it was a pretty good trip for him because, yeah. like I said, we work out usually at 8 to 12 in the morning and then... Uh, Go and eat, get some treatment, and then you know from three or four in the afternoon till dark, we're, we're at the beach, you know, and just swimming and just relaxing. So it's it was a good time. You seem like you're walking a lot better than you were at the end of the playoffs. Um, do you feel better? Or are you 100 percent? Yeah, 100 percent better. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the playoffs was a big struggle for me just to get through the season, and my tank was was you know I think the needle snapped off past empty towards that Spurs series. Um, just try to push through it. And I feel right now I feel 110. percent This is the best I've felt since I've had since I broke my ankle. Um, I, I've had no restrictions since July um, of this year. I played five on five in Australia, some open gyms. I've played five on five this whole week here. I've done all the workouts, um, done all the weight sessions. Haven't been restricted with anything I've done. So I'm very excited to come back here in, in good nick. I mean, you look at my ankle right now. And, Feel free to take photos if you want. <laughs> it looks, it just looks night and day different to what it did last season, and isn't, the swelling is not building up after sessions. And um, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. You know, the, the big thing for me was backing up day to day um, in the off season. I, I put together a training program to incorporate that, and it got to a point where I could I could back up from one one day to the next without swelling and pain and soreness, and then just kept building it up. And I haven't had any restrictions or problems the last two or three months. How much time after the season ended did you take off before you? really do anything? Um, I took off two weeks completely, um, but that, that still included rehab. I still did my rehab every day to try and get this swelling out, and then I started within two weeks. Um, now I wasn't going full speed. After after that two weeks off, I was I was doing mainly um, light stuff with some light conditioning, so I was doing um, all my rehab ankle stuff, all my treatment every day, all my massage and soft tissue, ice baths, and then I was just doing like touch stuff, so just, just, just some stuff where I wasn't really moving too much or running. And then I was doing non-impact conditioning, um, which was bike and, and, and a little bit of boxing and stuff like that, just to, to get my heart rate up without pounding my legs. I did that for about a month, month and a half, and then slowly tailored it up. So I had a pretty specific program that I kind of put together to, to try and keep myself in shape, but but not, not pound my legs too much and, and give my ankle a rest. And then once I came back into running and stuff, it felt great. Have you done the boxing thing before? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I have. I mean, okay. it's, it's something that I've done for, for a couple of years. Um, you know, it's not organized boxing, it's more just having pads yeah. on the court and, and, and you know, doing, doing like footwork. Uh, that and just, just mainly getting my arms moving to get conditioning. So so a lot of fast stuff and a lot of in and outs and pads and, and you know, the rhythm pads and the, and the speed ball and the bag and, and just doing that just to, just to get a different form of conditioning uh, rather than running up and down a court or, 
or doing stuff to pound my legs it's, it's more you get tired from your arms and your heart rate still gets up so it's, it's kind of a, a way to cheat um, some free conditioning without without putting too much toll on your legs Are you surprised at all how you're feeling after after what you put yourself through in the playoffs last year um, yeah, no, I, I always knew I just needed two or three months to actually f- focus on, on my ankle. You know, I, I came back from a pretty gruesome injury pretty quickly. Um, I was back on the court within six months of the surgery. Looking back now, it's probably probably a silly thing to do in a way because it, it did set me back a little bit and it was very frustrating mentally and physically. But um, I was out there, I was part of a, a, a team that, that had great success last season. I'm very, very proud of that. And now I'm excited for the, the next chapter, which is, which is coming back 100% healthy. How are you mentally? I know last year was a drain on you. Are you, you feeling good? Now? Yeah, I feel great. Yeah. You know, it'd be part of it is my ankle and just and another part of it is getting away and spending time with family and spending time, you know, um, just, just relaxing and taking your mind off things. It's very, very important. Um, so I feel I feel very, very good. Um, this is the best I've felt, as I said, since I broke my ankle. I felt this good. And, and, and the most important thing is not having a trainer or a coach um, tell you there's restrictions on what you're doing. I can come in here whenever I want. I can come in here and do what I want. I can run, I can condition, I can lift, I can shoot. I can play five on five and no one can tell me, like, you can only do one set or you can only play 20 minutes. I have none of that right now and, and I, you know, I'm not going to have any of that during the season. It's so obviously a big, big season upcoming for, for you guys as a team, but for you personally, how, how big of a season will this this be for you and where you maybe want to go uh, in your, your career? Well, it's pretty big, obviously, coming off a, a, a season numbers-wise that, that weren't, was probably one of my worst in my career. Um, but you know, there's a lot of factors contributing to that, and I'm not too worried about. It. I think you know the team that we have here. I'm very, very excited to be a part of. Thankful to be a part of. Um, and I'm you know hope to be here you know for a very long time. But that's that's not up to me um, at this stage. And, and once once we get to that bridge, we'll, we'll cross it. But I'm very excited um, to be part of a team that has a chance to win you know 50 plus games. Who knows? Um, make another playoff push and and you know go go further than we did last season. Big part of that playoff push last year was a you know a huge defensive leap year over year you guys were just outside the top 10 with Iguodala with Clay getting better with Steph getting better and you being healthy how good can this defense be can you be a top five in Indiana Chicago that type of defense I think we can um, you know the number one thing with defensive teams is everyone has to buy in you know first and foremost we are a high scoring team so that that is our strength the reason why we were successful last season wasn't because we're our scoring teams. We got stops. We needed to get stops, and that, that wasn't a trademark of the Warriors probably the last what twenty years. So um, we're very, very adamant that that's a focus of, of what wins games for us. Um, obviously, having Steph, you know, score fifty points is, is is very, very important for us offensively as well. And Clay shooting the ball the way he does, and David Lee getting double doubles. But I think defensively is where we win and lose games because, as you guys saw in the playoffs, if you can come down last three or four minutes and get stops. Um, you a great chance to win games and going into the playoffs a lot of people wouldn't have thought that you know if we had five or six possessions where we didn't score history would have proven that we would have lose that lost that game um, the playoffs we had we had that and we still won those games because we went down the other end and got stops too so I think um, we can just we can just get better for you personally how does having improved perimeter defense you know change the things you're doing do you take more risks less easier harder I'll do the same thing so I'll, I'll encourage you know um, Andre and, and Harrison and Steph and Clay and those guys to to even get up their men, you know, put more more ball pressure on because I'm going to be there. Um, you know, they know I'm going to come and help and try to take a charge or block a shot or even just contest a shot and make the guy hit a tough floater or something. Um, and they know that, so I think it helped them, especially guys with the length of Iguodala and Harrison that can really get up and cause some problems. Um, I encourage them to do it even more. Are your uh, defensive responsibilities different uh, when the Warriors go small with that uh, Barnes at the four versus when it's Lee in the power forward slot? Not really. Um, you know, we, pr- we proved that in the playoffs. I mean, I played a, I played a role where they, they didn't really have a shooting big like a lot of teams in the NBA, so I could just plug the middle. Um, Harrison did a great job for us. Um, but, you know, Denver didn't really look too much to go to their four men too much in the post because um, they went small as well with Wilson. But I don't think it'll make too much of a difference for us. Um, I think offensively it's a little different because it, it spreads the floor with four three-point shooters rather than three. Um, but, you know, defensively it's, it's much of a much of a thing. Where's your offensive game at right now? I know you weren't happy with your touch a little bit last year. Yeah, just rhythm and touch. It, um, it feels great right now. I'm, I'm moving well. I'm you know making quick moves now. And last season, you know, I catch the ball on the post, and it'd be you know lumber, 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 bounce, 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 and, and shoot a hoop because you know I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't I couldn't make a quick move off my ankle because I literally 
you know, it'd give out and I'd fall over. And so I try not to do too much. But now I'm back to a point where I can make quick moves and go off the dribble and, and do those things. Look, I'm not going to be a, a guy that gets 15, 20 shots on this team. It's just not realistic. Ten, even 10 is probably not realistic on this team, you know, with the weapons that we have. And I don't mind that. I don't mind buying into into the system of being the, the premier defender on this team, you know, controlling the paint, grabbing 10 rebounds, blocking a couple of shots and, and just finishing what, you know, what I have inside. Um, but my main role, like I said, will be to get, you know, Stephen, Stephen Curry and, and, uh, and, and Clay and those guys open. You were obviously back in Australia at the time, but what was your reaction when you see the team meeting with Dwight Howard and pursuing that, I guess? Uh, it is what it is. It's a, it's a business. Uh, first and foremost, you can never get too comfortable in this league. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, the Warriors obviously haven't had a chance to have a, a premier or a, you know, a premier free agent visit them in a number of years. Um, obviously, you know, we're much of a laughing stock organisation in the past where players wouldn't even consider coming here. So I think it was a step in the right direction from, from the front office and probably the reason why they did that. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I, I didn't take it too personal. I mean, um, right now, Dwight is a better player than I am, obviously. Um, I love going against him and competing and, and doing that. But, you know, he's, he's a, he's a <laughs> how many time all star and, and close to being an MVP a couple of years ago. And, and uh, he's been to an NBA Finals, so you know, it's one of those things that you can't really take too personal. Did you ever really, did you ever really think that was going to be a possibility now that that actually happened? I don't think so. I think um, you know, Dwight created a bit of a circus with it all, um, as, as most people said. So you know, he wanted to, to get his you know, five minutes with it all and, and make sure he, did, he visited all the teams he could and, and get, get as much coverage about it as he could, which is his prerogative. And you know, no one's saying anything's wrong with that. But, it did create a, a lot of turmoil with a lot of different teams, not, not just us. You know, there's a lot of guys that were like, you know, what the hell's going on here? And, and that's, that's kind of um, the, way, the, way, the way it panned out. I think Andre even said that. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's the truth. It's, yeah. it's, it's not, you know, there's no, it's not no disrespect to Dwight. I mean, he did it his way, but it did create a bit of a circus. And I think he, he probably even realised that after a while and probably wanted to, get, you know, just get the deal done. Um, that's just the way it is. I heard one interview where you joked about packing your bags for LA or <laughs> trying to figure it all out. Is that kind of how you handle it? Just kind of, kind of laugh it off. I mean, these rumors, these rumors, every off season, you know, when you guys are bored and you guys can't report on games, um, there's no real turmoil unless this guys are getting in trouble, which which does happen a fair bit actually in the NBA. Some some off court dramas, but whenever that's not happening, um, you know, trade rumors do get thrown up there, and, and with the world of Twitter these days, you know, some you know some some guy that just signed up to the Real GM Forum, could post something on Twitter and all of a sudden it's, it's, it's natural, uh, national news. So you can't take too much into it. Uh, that's just the way it is. You got to make a lot of it and have fun with it. You know, at the end of the day, if Dwight did sign here, I'd still be in the NBA, you know, just be playing somewhere else. And that's just the way, that's the way you got to look at it sometimes. Does it mean anything to you to have everybody, for the most part, back again doing this early, um, even after all the success you had last year? Yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see guys here and, and guys trying to buy in. And, and we're actually having a bit, you know, some, some, some good structured um, sessions with us, with our five on five and our weight sessions, and, and it's all voluntary. So it's good to see you guys here. And you know, to be honest, it's not not a bad place to come either, right? and, and be. You know, the Bay Area is a beautiful place to live. The weather's great at the moment. Um, the sun's out, so it's not like you don't have things to do off the court. So I think uh, guys kind of generally buy in, and, and then off the off the court they can go and do what they want, which is good. How much more fun is it now, especially compared to where you, what you were doing this time a year ago? Um, much, much. I mean, it's, it's it's night and day. I mean, there's no there's no difference. Um, it's just you know it was it was a hell hell for me the last twelve months. Uh, to be honest, and I'm just happy that that, that light. I can, you know, it's getting brighter and brighter for me in the tunnel, and it's finally got to to the stage where I feel like I'm driving out of that tunnel now, and 100. percent